Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching. The channel's called Ratchet, my name's Andrew, and on this episode, we start taking steps in the right direction. Run the title. Welcome to the channel if you're new. If you're not, thank you for tuning back in. Make sure you leave a, a like and a comment below on this video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future instalments of the project that I do release. You can get yourself up to speed by checking out the back catalogue of videos that I have released just up there in the top right hand corner. In this episode, I'm going to be giving you a tour around the new aluminium panelling that I've made. It feels like a really good step in the right direction. Finally, I'm making some um, actual lasting progress. Um, so the strip down, I think, touch wood, has finished. And now it's all guns blazing, moving forwards with the project in the right direction. So let's crack on with that. So the last couple of weeks work has been progressing on the 40, um, a little bit slower than I'd liked for one reason or another. Um, but even so, forward steps. Let me give you a little run around what's been going on. I think the outer seals from Tornado generally don't come with any sort of cross bracing. Um, and certainly on this car, um, I have had found that the panelling had started to bow in the middle. Um, the previous owner had riveted in some bracing uh, three pieces of ribbing, but that still wasn't sufficient um, to stop any deflection of the panels. So what I did do, as you can see, was get a little bit carried away with the decorative bracing um, made out of 20 mil box section welded in there. So now that should reduce any span sufficiently um, to stop any more dipping in the new panels from me climbing in and out. Then moving round to the back, you'll see that I've added a diagonal brace to the uh, rear rollover hoop. On most 40s that I've seen, the brace comes a little bit lower down in the frame, but how this, or how the chassis is made by uh, Tornado, just at that sort of area, it gave me a nice flat intersection of the two pieces to then weld in a gusset plate. So it got me a nice high mounting point and then I just added another gusset plate on the bottom and then welded the lot in. So this is 40 mil CDS. What protection it will give me, I'm not quite sure if I was ever in an accident, but you know, better something than nothing. So that's been done both sides. And again, that's ready for priming. The welds on the bottom went lovely, but the welds at the top just didn't seem to flow. Um, I remember a mate of mine, he said, you're either a welder or a grinder. And I think in my case, I'm definitely a grinder. So I think chassis wise, that takes care of the modifications that I want to add at this stage. So I need to get these in some etch primer to stop any onset of rust. One area I did go into, which at the time I had no solution at all, was how I was going to transfer over the holes in the chassis through to the new um, aluminium panels. Initially, I'd thought about trying to carefully remove the old panelling, use that as the template, which I have done, but then also use the old panels to locate all of the rivet holes around the piece. Now, because of how battered they ended up becoming being removed from the car, it was, they were useless other than for the actual um, overall size. So what I did kind of strike on, which was a something obvious when you think about it, but it just came to me in a, in a moment of genius. Um, if you've ever done any gravestone rubbing when you were a kid at school, this is basically it. So on the template, cardboard templates that I made, I then take them over to the chassis and then just with the side of a pencil, I don't know if you can pick up on those, manage to pick up on all of the various uh, rivet nut points and all of the rivet holes around the existing chassis. And I'm really pleased to say that 
all of the panels that I've made so far and have drilled so far have worked out absolutely spot on. I used the outlines of the standard tornado patterns to get me in a rough ballpark, but pretty much on all of the panels I have added or slightly redesigned how the panels actually sit. So for example, this engine bay panel doesn't return down the side of the chassis. I wanted it returning down the side, which then means I can run a line of rivets along this edge. And then also around the backside, again, it just finishes flat here. I wanted it to return down the edge. So it gives a nice finishing um, detail to the outer seal trim piece. And this panel in itself has to be had to be redesigned to a certain extent because I added the diagonal brace. So I will have to split this into a two piece section, um, but I've not got around to making that. Likewise, when it comes to the top of the outer sill, again, I've returned it down the side. I'm also going to return it over the inside, which I'm going to leave in um, brushed aluminium. Uh, I've got a bead roller and I'm going to roll in the beads along the top and then where the fuel filler sender is, I'm going to make a nice cover panel uh, to go over that. And then move into the rear bulkhead. The Tornado bulkhead is one complete panel. And to be honest, in my small garage, it's just a pain in the ass to try and work with. So I've broken it down into three panels, which I think you can see fairly obviously. Um, but these side panels, I've redesigned. The Tornado panel was just flat and it finished here. And then there's like a little step um, between the larger box section, between this angled piece of box section and uh, this line here, which basically meant it was a really awkward area to either trim in carpet or fabricate up something nicely. So I just completely designed that out by making a, a larger trim panel that then returns around the side. Cloaking over this edge will then be the panel that fits there. So I think it's gonna, it's gonna end up with a, just a, a real nice clean look. I'm really quite surprised how nicely this has worked out so far. Now I'm sure at some stage I'm gonna make a royal cock up of one, two, ten different panels, but while I'm giving it so much thought and forethought and concentration, in, uh, in making these first few panels, everything's working out quite nicely. A few moments later. As if by magic, two minutes after making that comment about not concentrating and messing something up, I've basically drilled the bolt holes to fix the panel, perfect. But I've also drilled the rivet holes which go behind which you wouldn't see on this panel. You see this side has just got the fixings for the riv nuts or for the bolts for the riv nuts. But this side, I've drilled the whole lot. What I did, <sighs> honestly. So now, moving that firmly into the bin, I'm now in the process of making a new rear panel what does make me a little bit sad though, is whether I'm going to be able to remove my bulge without completely destroying it. So there might need to be a new one of those made. Live and learn. The back panel I've got fitted into place with the correct holes now drilled. And in all fairness, it fits far nicer than the first one did, um, mainly because I'm starting with a blank slate as in the, the rear bulkhead. Um, so that's coming together nicely. But the main thing is, and the bit that I'm happiest about, is all of this.
we've got new rear panelling done. This is completely different to the standard Tornado panelling. New outer cockpit sill plate made. One thing I did say I was going to do was to add the um, ribs into the panel. Um, but as silly as it sounds, that's quite a common detail. So what I wanted to do was actually to highlight the bracing that I'd made underneath. Um, it seemed like a shame for it to go unseen. So what I did and what will be set out, and I'm pretty sure it will look nice once it's all done and dusted, is um, just added rivet holes, just so when you open the door, you're going to get a little bit of detail come showing through. But moving around to the back, because this is so different from how Tornado um, supply their kits. So to start with these now return over the top, whereas they don't normally. Um, the original panel normally stops about here. Um, so what I've done is I've added in this angled piece. I had to cut off the clutch hose bracket, which was located somewhere in there. So I need to weld it back onto the chassis um, somewhere this side. One thing that I do need to do is cut a hole for the shift linkage to uh, go through. And then also we've got the rear uh, tie bar, which links through to the chassis. So I'm gonna have to get a hole cut for that. So I'll refer back to the cardboard template, get that in place and then work out the shape hole that I need to cut before then transferring that through to the aluminium. And then underneath, I'm gonna make a big cover panel, which basically comes from the floor at the back all the way through to the um, angled new trim. So this whole underside will be cloaked as well. The biggest pain in the ass was trying to get these size panels actually fitted in and around the existing chassis because there are so many kind of conflicting angles nothing slots in together nicely so it's a it was a bit of a, a battle and a juggling act trying to make the panels as big as possible so it doesn't look too uh, pieced together but yet still able to get them in and out fairly easily but I'm really really pleased with how it's sort of shaping up I'm a mile off finishing but even so, this is kind of uh, some real positive steps forwards in the actual build. Something else that was sacrificed to get this detail working was I've removed the existing brake lines, uh, how they were run. Um, they clashed with a little point down there. So I'm going to remake those. And I think that's going to be teamed up with the fact that I'm going to swap out the pedal assembly to a, to a pedal box. I'm currently thinking about using a Willwood top hung, um, either front or reverse mount cylinder pedal box. If anyone does have a recommendation for uh, another manufacturer that does fit nicely, then if you could let me know in the comments below, that would be really appreciated. So the driver's side is shaping up really nicely. Um, all of the templates that I have made for that side I can now just flip over and use for the passenger side. So now you can see, yeah, just the templates flipped over. I'm toying with the idea of having, so the battery was located there. I'm toying with the idea of having the battery sunk below the panel, just so it's accessible, just via a, a, a nice little cover panel in the top. I'm trying to give it some more thought doing a bit of research on what's the smallest battery I can get away with. If anyone can let me know in the comments, that would be much appreciated. I don't want to go with a tiny race battery. So if someone can suggest a normal size, or say in inverted commas, battery that I can use with a, a 302 V8 with minimal additional extras in terms of electrics, that would be appreciated. So I think that will clean up this side really nicely. I'm going to revise the fuel system because I'm pretty confident I don't need everything that was previously fitted to the car. So again, that's gonna get tidied up and depending how compact I can get that, that's also going to be hidden away on the driver's side. Again, below an access cover, 
just behind the fuel tank. So that pretty much concludes this episode, which I must admit, I'm really pleased with the progress. It is time consuming, but as long as I do keep taking my time, I think I'm going to end up with something that I'm going to be um, very happy with. And at the end of the day, any mistakes that I make are my fault and I can't blame anyone else. Um, if you do like what you've seen, make sure you click the subscribe button below. Give the video a like, leave a comment. Um, it's always appreciated. Someone get back to me on the minimum size of battery. You can follow more um, current and regular updates on uh, Instagram, uh, RatchetGT40. So you can find me and follow me on there. And any of the previous episodes, make sure you go back in the library, check those out, links up there. And I will catch you on the next episode.